My name is Jessica Sabogal and I am a first generation Colombian American muralist living in Oakland, California. Um, a lot of the work that I do is because when I walk into a gallery or, or a museum, I don't see myself uh, represented in a lot of the narratives being depicted. So um, a lot of my identities inform the work that I do. So that's being a daughter of immigrants, it's being a queer woman of color, um, it's being, yeah, all of those things uh, all bound up in one and uh, just not seeing that out in the world. So specifically what I'm gonna present tonight, it, when I was thinking about you know, do I show people murals? Do I show people um, the posters that I've done and the work that I've done? I thought that was what I can accomplish in six minutes and 20 seconds was showing people how I, it is that I found my voice and why it is that I depict the people that I do. Um, and I hope that in turn they can self-reflect so that in anything that they do, whether it be science, art, math, technology, they can learn how to tell their own stories. My name is Flor Olivo, and I currently work at the University of Utah. Um, I also consider myself a member of this community. I actually kind of had a hard time coming up with exactly what I was going to present because I realized that I do a lot of things. So aside from working at the university and sometimes um, engaging in activism and art, I also am a full-time parent of four children and I like to take pictures and photograph my community. Um, and so what I'll share a lot about today is some of the photographs and some of the images that I've been able to collect in the spaces that I've been allowed to enter. I'm Megan Reynolds. I'm an assistant professor of sociology at the University of Utah. And my work relates to this event in so far as I explore various axes of inequality, one of which relates to gender and um, sex in the US and elsewhere. I'm Claudia Geist. I am an assistant professor of sociology and gender studies at the University of Utah. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about who we are and where we came from and how feminism has inspired us as people um, and as scholars and what we study uh, specifically and how we incorporate feminism into our work. We also will describe a project where we co-taught a, a seminar on gender health and human rights where we created resources for survivors of sexual assault on the University of Utah campus. We have handouts for community resources um, about this topic and one of the takeaway points is that there is not just one feminism. You can study things from a feminist perspective in a variety of ways and we hope that the participants will go away just thinking about what kind of feminist they are and that there is not the one right kind of feminist. You can wear lipstick. And apparently wear earrings. My name is Nicole Hebron. I'm an artist and an activist and an organizer and educator based in Southern California. I run a project space called The Situation Room and I teach art at Chapman University. I'm, I'm currently employing a philosophy that I call Feminism 4D. So if we think of the first dimension as a dot and the second dimension as a line and the third dimension as an object, 4D of course implies time and space. So I'm thinking about living feminism in time and space. So my talk tonight will be about that, how, how I do that, and hopefully we'll be offering some people some ideas and strategies for how they can do that too. I'd like people to think about um, what sort of version of feminism fits them. Um, you know, kind of echoing Claudia's sentiment that there's not a one-size-fits-all feminism, but it means a lot of different things. Um, and it may be different depending on your age. I know we have a, a very diverse um, group including some sixth graders I hear um, and based on your race and based on your gender identity and your sexual orientation um, 
and that these are all things that make for a unique form of feminism for each person. So there's, um, there's, I think, an attempt on both of our parts to get people to just kind of um, tailor their own idea of feminism to themselves and think about how they can bring that out into the world and make their communities a better place. A lot of people think that feminism means man-hating. Another word for that is misandry. Um, and I don't happen to hold that same belief. So I don't think that men are the problem. I think patriarchy is the problem. I think, I think the structure of society as it is set up now is designed to give certain people power and to oppress and disempower other people. And I'm very interested in finding ways to create a society that is more equitable, that there is equal representation, that there is a, a representative democracy, if you will, um, uh, that, that actually reflects the demographic that's out there. Um, and f for that to happen, we have to all come to terms with the fact that everybody in a community is better off when there is equity in that community. I think community matters because I don't think that people can exist without it. I think that um, in my own life, community has meant survival. And so for me, having a community has allowed me to be able to be the person that I am and to um, be able to reach all of my goals. And while reaching those goals, also raising children, also being a happy person creating art, um, and contributing to the people around me. So I think, for me, community is essential to my existence. I think the first step, really, in getting men or anybody engaged in the feminist fight is to encourage people to acknowledge that, that the welfare of the community is important to them. Um, that the welfare of, of humankind and the planet is important to them. I don't think feminism is only about people. I think it's also about creating a, a sustainable existence on and with the planet. I do what I do because it's the only way that I knew how to bring about change. So for example, when I was in college, I was studying to be the President of the United States because I thought, who brings about the most amount of change? He does, she does, um, I should be that person. And then once I graduated, I realized that the only way that I could really bring about change is through art and through large, large, large format versions of art. And I've learned that it's my own sort of micro um, political systems that I'm sort of creating. So I'm hoping that whoever is in the audience tonight can go home and think about, well, Again, whether it's I'm a scientist in a lab or I'm a teacher or I'm a banker, there's still ways that we can stand up for one another and do what's just. And I think that um, the more we think about empathy and the lives that other people that don't look and talk like us um, live, then that's going to move towards change. Okay.